The South Carolina Democratic Party Convention was last Saturday. Uh, raise your hands in the air if you attended, if you were part of that. Even if you were just Friday night, raise your hand. All right, well, that was good. Good turnout. So I appreciate all of you who made that trip. Uh, some of us came up the night before. Uh, it's a lot of effort, and it was a long day. Greenwood County had 26 delegate seats that we were allowed, and we were able to fill 23 of them. Uh, so that means three of our votes went unvoted on, but 23 is still a good showing. Heck, there was one county that didn't send any delegates. I'm not going to name names because I'm not here to shame those that are having some struggles, but Greenwood had a good turnout, so I'm proud of our group. Our seats were filled. Um, the night before, and these are the pictures you're seeing on the screen now, this was from Friday night. Friday night is the big fundraising dinner that the SCDP holds. It's called the Blue Palmetto Dinner. Um, it, it, lots of fancy dress, fancy food, people show up. Uh, you see some celebrities. I saw lots of faces that I knew, including Representative Congressman Jim Clyburn was there, of course. Um, he was the star of the show, the bill of the ball. Uh, but the dinner was also very nice. We had a last minute switch for our special guest speaker. And at the last minute, because the original speaker, she caught COVID and couldn't come. And the last minute, Governor Roy Cooper from North Carolina came on down and spoke to us, and he was great. Roy Cooper is amazing. Uh, he, he gave a very rousing speech of how it took decades for North Carolina to shift from the extreme conservatives that they used to be to more of a mixed purplish state that it is today, a Democratic governor and a, and a large Democratic body, and they're doing amazing things. He even rubbed it in our faces that they expanded Medicare. They expanded it and says, South Carolina, one day it'll happen here. One day. He says, keep the faith. And uh, he did a great job speaking. Jim Clyburn also spoke, and he just rattled off all of the accomplishments of the Biden administration just in the past two years, uh, under fire, under the, 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 the worst circumstances, coming out of a pandemic. And one after one, he rattled off all the amazing things. It's up to us to help spread that message. You know, sometimes you forget. Sometimes all you hear is the nastiness. There's so much good that has happened. In fact, one of the handouts there is about all of the investment that's being made into South Carolina, thanks to things like the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, just amazing investments in our infrastructure and in our technology. Take a look at it and just be proud of what government, when allowed to do things right, is doing for the people. And we need to be there to support that. But that Friday night was fantastic. The convention itself, you can see our smiling members from Greenwood County are here, uh, well represented, all sorts of people came out. It was fun. I, I see you, George, you had a good time? He did. Uh, it was a long day. Now, I grew up Roman Catholic, so I went to mass every Sunday. And Mass is about standing up and sitting down and standing up and sitting down. That's what this convention was like. I felt like I was at home because it was literally six straight hours of standing up, sitting down, standing up, sitting down. Uh, there was really one big order of business that took six hours to conduct. This was unlike any convention I'd been to before. It was to elect new leadership for the South Carolina Democratic Party. The first hour and a half was spent debating the rules of voting. So there's a committee that set the rules, but the committee can't do it on their own. It has to be voted in by the delegates that are in attendance. So the committee presented the rules, and then there was an hour and a half debate from the audience about the rules. People were making a motion on doing this and a motion to change that. They wanted to go from voice vote to printed ballots to ranked choice voting, which would have meant they would have had to drive across town, print out 1,300 new ballots, and then bring them back. We could still be there now <laughs> if those motions made it through. But an hour and a half, everything got cleared out, and then the voting began. Well, first, you had the nominations of the candidates. 
So the first spot to get voted on was the chair, and he had to have nominations. Then he had to have second nominations, and second to the second nominations. So there were three nomination speeches for each candidate, and then the candidate spoke. So that's four speeches per candidate. There were 20 candidates that had signed up total for all the, for all the spots. Now, they all didn't get a chance to speak because of the diversity rules, meaning that if a male is elected chair, then only female candidates can run for first vice. So that knocked out some candidates or vice versa. But still, it was long. Once you got through the speeches, then you had the vote. Guess how the voting was conducted? 1,300 people in attendance. And the way they conducted the vote was this. They would take candidate number one. So let's say it was um, Catherine Fleming Bruce. They would go to this section and point. All those in favor of Catherine Fleming Bruce, please stand. And there was somebody with a clipboard, and we would count off those who were standing. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the person was there just checking it off, making the count. Okay, now this section. Everybody for Catherine Fleming Bruce, please stand. One, two, three. This section, that section, that section. Ten minutes later. All right, everybody in favor of Crystal Spain over here, please stand. One, two, and you would count. Now, it was precise, it was accurate, but it was long. It was long. Now, as a techie guy like me who has his phone, I was completely entertained the entire time. All right, I'm looking at the news, I'm reading books, I'm good to go. But it was a very long, long process. But we got through it. We did get through it. People stayed, 1,300 votes were counted for that first chair position. And in the end, Crystal Spain was elected. So here are, um, here are some photos of the voting of the, of the election itself. Some members of our group even got some uh, selfies taken with the new leaders. They look great. I saw uh, Belinda Melson, Tommy Melson, uh, Deshaun Williams. They got some photos afterwards, so good for them. Uh, and and it, was, it was a long process, but it was fair. And by the end, we do now have some new leadership. So here are our new leaders. This is their photo from left to right. It is Myra Rivera Vasquez for second vice chair. She came to Greenwood and spoke. So if you were able to attend two months ago at our convention, you saw Myra speak. Colleen Condon, first vice chair, she's from Charleston. Crystal Spain is our chair, the first black female chair of the South Carolina Democratic Party. So history was made. And she's qualified, believe me, she's more than qualified. And then Michelle Brandt, the third vice chair. Now I'll tell you this, this is me personally, I was most excited about Michelle's win, because I know Michelle. She was a candidate for state house last year. She ran in Charleston. She uh, ran one of the best campaigns that I'd ever seen, made me look like I was sitting at home playing PlayStation while, while others were campaigning. In comparison, she knocked on tens of thousands of doors out there. She put in the work uh, unsuccessfully, but her campaign was about supporting candidates in the future. She felt like she didn't get a lot of support, a lot of instruction, a lot of guidance, and she wants to make sure that in the next election, anybody who stands up and decides to take on running for office, she wants the state party to be there for them. And I applauded, I applauded that. I mean, I took that personally, so I'm very excited that she is in that spot, and I know she will be true to her word. Um, I wanna show just a quick video of Crystal Spain's acceptance speech. It was only a couple minutes long, so let's watch Crystal talk to the crowd. Come, come here and say a word. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. I, I'm a mess, I, I apologize. But I'm so, my heart is so full and I'm so overwhelmed that you all would choose me and I want you to know that because I chose y'all. The work I do for this party is because I love y'all. I love the people who make up the party. And I'm going to continue to do this work. 
Thank you to all the delegates who voted for me and for the ones who did not. Thank you for participating in the process because this is what our part, this is our party. It's about democracy. It's about a, a fair and equitable process. So thank y'all so much. I want to thank the congressman for his for believing in me, for supporting me, for ever giving me an employment opportunity. I thank him so much. I thank all of my campaign team, my volunteers, and I really want to give a special shout out to um, my campaign manager, Alicia Albergati, who her level of commitment to me in this campaign was just remarkable. But I want to just end with this, all the prayers, all the words of encouragement from the volunteers, I received them. This was not an easy journey, and I want to congratulate my uh, opponents who also ran strong races, and this was not easy, y'all. But I'll end with this, it's my favorite thing because I want to get a round of applause. Uh, when I played basketball at the University of South Carolina at Aiken, I excelled, and I've been telling this story across the state. I am the only player, man or woman, to have over 1,000 career points and over 1,000 career rebounds. Thank you, and I say that to say this. I did not accomplish that by standing flat-footed in the lane. I did that by doing work, and I promise you, I am going to do the work that is needed for us to move our party forward. Thank you so much. So as you can see, it was very emotional. This, this was the most competitive race that we've had in, in decades, quite frankly. Uh, many of us got mailers, you know, for one against the other. You know, more mailings than I'd ever seen before. Uh, although, how many of you are getting all these Ron DeSantis mailings in your inbox? I'm getting flooded with that. Like, wh why are they mistaking me as somebody who might even in my most deranged moments, vote for Ron DeSantis. But they must have spent at least 20 bucks on mailings to my house. But I'm not here to talk about that. Uh, I do want to say that uh, I give great props to Brandon Upson. Uh, he ran a phenomenal positive campaign. He and Mary Guerin and Melina and Erica uh, ran together as a slate. When it came to the vote for the chair, there were 1,300 delegates Crystal got around 680 votes, just over half, just over half. It was a very close election, but she did get over half, so she was the winner, but it showed that the party really embraced all the different points of view, all the candidates really connected. Um, Brandon, when he saw the, the results for Crystal, before we could take our turn and vote for Brandon, he went up and he, you know, he saw the numbers and he conceded in one of the most gracious concession speeches of unity and rallying behind the, the winner and just bringing the party together that all, any type of bitterness was suddenly gone. All the internal quarreling was gone. Did you feel that leave the room? Those that were there, it just was back to being unified and that's the way we need to be. So we do all rally around Crystal and her team and we wish her the best and we stand beside her, behind her, and we move forward with her. Uh, any questions about the convention, the process, any other observations people wish to share before we move on to our next topic? Okay, next year is a presidential election year. There will be a convention next year. It's going to be very different than what we had this year because we're going to be about rallying behind our presidential nominee. Uh, so we look forward to that, and I encourage you to be there. Uh, if you wish to be a delegate, make sure you sign so in the volunteer form up front where Ms. Gwen is. There's a sign there that says be a state delegate. If you're a state delegate from this county, that means you can vote at these conventions on whatever it is we vote for. So we encourage you to be a delegate, and you're a delegate for two years. So this two-year term is up, so starting with the next conventions, we could have a whole new slate of delegates if you wish to represent Greenwood. Uh, 